Glad to know you're still with us. Now we'll delve into analysis of the comparative earnings of uh, medical or let's say healthcare companies. We have uh, about four of them that we will be considering, Glaxo Smith Clean, we have May and Baker, Fixing Healthcare and Nimeth International Pharmaceuticals. So we'll start with uh, Glaxo Smith Clean in 2022. 20.425 billion naira. Of course, that's uh, Q3 2022. And in 2021, 16.452 billion naira. The percentage change there to 4.15. For May and Baker, 10.348 billion naira. That was Q3 2022. And Q3 2021, 8.054 billion naira. The percentage change there being 28.49. For Fitz, uh, for Fitzin Healthcare, 31.428 billion naira in 2022 and in 2021 21.752 billion naira the percentage change to 44.48 for Nimeth international pharmaceuticals this particular one is full year 2022 and they had a 2.702 billion naira and in 2021 3.046 billion naira the percentage change to minus 11.28 ambrus what do you make of this report? You have to start with for the number. The numbers are looking good, but I want to say one thing for Nigerian investors. I think uh, COVID-19 was a blessing to Nigeria in terms of this sector. Before COVID-19, this is a, de a dead sector that we don't hear about uh, the healthcare. But since uh, COVID-19, government have inundated funds. We can see activities improving, not reflecting on the number of these companies. So that it's good to you know invest in a sector and give incentive. You see, activity. And also when there is business in that sector, don't forget that anywhere in the world, if you're thinking of know where to put money for long term you go to healthcare sector because as people are aging are bringing the new babies that means that sector is always there for any you know any, any producer or any business to work to harness for me it's a good number that we're seeing this aggressive uh, numbers and after post covid 19 which for me is a good one kudos to the industry and also the government that also encouraged that uh, for me if you look at the numbers here the top line i tell you that these companies have done well for 2022 third quarter third quarter because this is a kind of uh, an occupation of first quarter second quarter and third quarter to see this uh, figure for me it's a good one but we want to see the the bottom line the bottom line, which is the PAT ball looking at the top line the order well means they are off you know, kind of eating to another market expand their business either a new product or you know the match and all those stuff all the going to uh, please, for me it's a good one for me it's a good one for the setup but let's see the bottom line for us to say yes here they are because every investor is interested in what that profit after pass that is we want to know what is coming to you after they are thinking of the expenses cost of seeds that's why all our eyes is on what on that PAT to see where the companies were in PAT. That is, let's go ahead and see the number. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Mr. Kufi, if you can hear me, kindly confirm. <laughs> well, it is very clear to me that the leader is obvious, fixing become the leader, and it's not for how long you have been in the industry, but how you plan. <laughs> we have seen what has been demonstrated in the banking, and that is repeated by fixing in the pharmaceutical. Nobody remember fixing in the last 20 years, but today is a leader, and it shows clearly that this is come to stay, and that give hope for the newcomers. If you really want to be in this industry, there is still room. If fixing can make it, any other can make it, but I'm very satisfied that fixing is a leader in this group. All right, let's talk about Nimeth for a moment. What do you make of that report? Mr. Well, Kofi. Yes. What I make from the report is that, yes, we have seen the glasses that have done some restructuring and that push it to the profit. But when you go back to the time over, you see that they are no longer there. Remember that Glasgow was made of three pharmaceutical companies. Yes, much Isaac. better. But yes. But today, Despite my acquisition, they have yet not much with the fixing that acquired nothing. So it shows that you have to plan to grow and fix some plan for that and it make it. We hope that any newcomer can come to this field because we have the population and health is life and there is a need for drug now and ever. All right. Well, very quickly, we'll go to the profit after tax, and that's where I'd like uh, Charles to come in. For Gladys Smith Klein, we have 483.543 million naira in 2022. And in 2021, 112.699 million naira. 
the percentage changed to 329.06. Mm -hmm. For M and B, 1.430 billion Naira in 2022. And in 2021, 882.431 million mm -hmm. Naira. Percentage changed there, 62.08. For fixing, 3.439 billion Naira in 2022. And in 2021, 2.324 billion Naira. The percentage changed there, 47.97. Now for Nimeth, uh, 2020, that's a full year 2022, we have minus 109.663 million Naira. And then in 2021, 270.576 million Naira. The percentage changed there, minus 140.53. Charles, let's have your thought. Yes, looking at the profit figures, of course, they guide, as um, Ambrose will tell you there, figures don't tell lies. The fundamentals is there. But however, taking decisions, you must combine both technical and fundamentals to give you an informed decision. It is obvious, it's clear there, looking at those for just profit after tax, Glasgow, yes, we would expect Glasgow to be in the, the leader. But unfortunately, if you look at other parameters again, other ratios, you will see that the real leader, our group by the end, is fixing. However, but for Glasgow, yes, Making that kind of um, profit is it's, it's quite uh, encouraging, but I expect them to do more because they've been in the industry for a very long time. Glasgow, I mean, like I said, in the past 10, 15 years, you will not hear fixing. But now it's obvious that uh, fixing is the leader in that uh, group. Uh, but however, from the profit after tax, uh, Glasgow seems to be the, the leader there. Now, what informs this figure for Glasgow? They have invested so much on research and development. And they are focusing to deliver vaccine, you know, and medicine using science of the immune system. So you can see that they, their vaccine production has increased. Uh, and even we are doing a lot of vaccination in the country today. Four in every 10 children has received vaccine each year. And of course, it is a GSK that is pioneering that um, vaccination. So you can see that they have shown that um, they are still the leader. But however, when it comes to uh, maybe the in terms of earnings, then I would say Fisin is the leader in the pharmaceutical industry. Mm -hmm. That industry, the health sector is key to the development of any nation. It requires a lot of capital, it requires a lot of investment in science and technology. And of course, you could see that all these um, firms there have done that, of course, um, except the Nimet, which um, I, I, I won't really say what is their problem, but I think they should go back to the drawing board and see how they can um, be in that um, business. All right, very quickly, just before we go, for him, he believes GlaxoSmithKline is, uh, has the, the better result when we look at profit after tax. Is that what you believe? I think he's probably looking at a percentage change. No, for me, if you look at the, the numbers, like you said, number don't like 15 is leading with almost a 3 point something uh, billion profit after tax for third quarter, followed by you know, me and Baker. I think the GSK is coming third. If you look at the market price... L that's what I said. I think he's looking at the percentage change. Yeah, it's possible, but we need to look at the figure. Everything is good, but look at the figure. Like, I tell you that if you have uh, 12, uh, 12 children and you want to share one uh, chicken and the one that has uh, two, you know, you see that the one has to enjoy the game, but 12 with us, really, that's why if you come to the any per share, look at what is the number of shares in issue of this company. Then to divide this uh, profit after tax, because after we have gotten to that, you want to see, you want to be, you want to share it among all the shareholders in that company, that uh, your PAT will be per share for everyone that was in that company. That is very, very important. If you look at the figures, I think the uh, fixing is still leading. I say that a PAT is very, very important for every investor because that will determine whether there will be dividend payout and also whether the price will respond to what for your to your performance. And you can see that fixing has already above uh, you know, uh, 12 naira before now, 12 20 before coming down to around 10 naira, uh, 9 naira. But I feel that there's the potential looking at the EPS of uh, you know, of uh, fixing about 1 naira 50 kubo, that of uh, you know, me and Baker around uh, 83 kubo, and that of uh, the GSK 40 kubo, 60 kubo. For me, I see that there's high potential in these two companies that are into. You know, Production because the the state of Atel, the factory for fixing, is also telling on, on them. You can see that even 
JSK give business to FSK to do for them. They are fixing a small organizer and they have the. So also, don't forget about uh, me and Bega. Before now, has entered into agreement with federal government to produce vaccine. They have the facility. I see potential in that sector for investors are thinking long. There's opportunity there. But like I tell you that, you want to see, are you buying right? What is the fair value of these companies? Who are their earnings or their tech analysis? You want to see where they are. That's why it's good to combine these two to know exactly where we are going. But on the strength of their Q3 number four, fixing, with one naira fifty people can project that around two naira final for the year. It's okay for them. I would like to surpass it. That means dividend also increase compared to what they paid last year. Also for me and Baker, seeing this uh, 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 earnings of about eighty three kubu. But if you look at that uh, number very well, that's what I call called well, extra item. That means there's something they store to support the, this price for me and Baker. But the good thing is that, but in Nigeria, when you are selling me items to support, at the end of the day, you pay good dividend to your shareholders. If that suffices, that means we're supposed to see a good dividend at the end of the day for me and Baker. And the price around there below five naira, I see potential in that sector. Whether I'm thinking of dividend, I think these numbers will support good dividend from this, this sector. That means you can look the way of this company, depending on your investment objective. All right. Moving now to the earnings per share, we start again with GlaxoSmithKline, uh, 40 Kobo. For me and Baker, 83 Kobo. For Fitzin Healthcare, 1 Naira 50 Kobo. And then for Nimeth, uh, minus 6 Kobo. All right. I, I like uh, Mr. Kufi to talk to us about this. Yes. Uh, uh, as I said it earlier, I will repeat myself that Fitzin <laughs> is a leader. Even in terms of the absolute profit, you can see that Add all the profit of the three company is not up to 50 percent of fixing. Yes. So what it means that in terms of absolute figure, fixing is a leader. In terms of earning, fixing is the leader. And the market prove it right. Today we are total of nine naira plus compared to the rest of the prices. So once you are a leader, you remain a leader. And I say kudos to fixing. And I hope that more pharmaceutical will come to the line because we still need more. We want to take care of Nigeria market and Africa across. Yes. Thank you very much. So price to earnings ratio now. Uh, for Glaxo, we have uh, 14.22. For May and Baker, we have 4.73. For Fitzin, 6.04. And for Nimeth, minus 25.98. Charles, let's have your take on this. Okay. Looking at um, commercial ratios now, we're looking at the price to earnings ratio. Like Ambrose will say, these are uh, still figures because we, it is what they have earned before. But it will assist investors to plan. Yes, uh, PE ratio, you can see that um, if you look at it, M and B, should, I, I should invest in M and B because it will take me uh, a lesser time to recoup my investment if everything remains uh, the same. Yes, I think it is it, it, good. You look at it again. But you must also realize that, yes, the fixing is there. Is, is the most profitable in terms of the earnings. And of course, that is what will um, inform investors' decision. But for the price earning ratio, we are seeing it there. Yes, the other three uh, companies are fine, except for Nimet. Again, we have seen their figures do not tell lies. My advice will be investors, if you want to take decision as to which of these companies to invest, make sure you look at other variables and other ratios before you take um, your decision. Just looking at just one ratio and making your decision will not be uh, correct. Absolutely. Now, very quickly, profit margin. GlaxoSmithKlein, 2.37. May and Baker, 13.82. Fitzin, 10.95. And Nimeth, minus 4.06. I'm just <coughs> very quickly, let's have your thoughts on that. Yeah, profit margin is just a simple way to know how you know, efficient this company in terms of uh, cost. If a company is making a uh, one naira, you know, in order of its cost, uh, um, let's say turnover, what is the return as a profit? That is why you have a profit margin. Well, for looking at the figure, I will tell you that it looks better that stock like, uh, you know, uh, me and Baker, out of one naira, is in about uh, you know, 13 kubo. For me, it's okay. Uh, fixing is also looking good. Out of one naira of their you know, gross earnings, they are getting about you know, 10 kubo. Five, but if you look at it, the cost of, you know, of production or cost of uh, activities in the cost of activities in that sector can show that on their profit margin. But still, it's okay. Same thing for them, above 10, 5, 10 percent. But I think you know, the cost is also eating because cost of uh, production, cost of uh, both fuel, energy, everything has also referable. I mean, this is a good one for them. I think, especially for 
for me and Baker fixing, I think the profit margin is very, very okay. You know, me. I hope that a time will come where we won't uh, dwell so much on this operating cost because to a very large extent, it's really hitting, you know, it's impacting the bottom line of companies. Yeah, I, I agree with you. But the good thing is that because also we have a good uh, manager able to navigate, if not, it will be more than this, but you can see that, that most of the companies in Nigeria are well run because if in this midst of, uh, you know, high cost and they were seeing a positive number, then they were seeing profit, even though this, say kudos to them, we want to see more if the approaching environment become better going to the future. That is our, our hope and um, pray that it will be so. Absolutely. Well, very quickly, return on equity. I'd like uh, Mr. Kofi to talk to us about this. For Glaxo, we have 5.23. For M&B, we have 17.48. For Fitzin, 21.30. And for Nimeth, minus 10.02. In closing, very quickly, uh, Mr. Kofi, talk to us about this. Mr. Kofi, if you can hear me. All right. Uh, mi okay. Charles, uh, let's have your thought on this. Mr. Charles? Okay. I guess I'll just come back to you. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> look at that. Uh, it's on, uh, no, it's on an equity. equity. For yes. me, this is what every investor wants to see because you want to see how they manage the fund you are investing in that company. That means all your eyes to see how are they taking, making the short use of those funds you are investing. For me, these companies have done well. If you look at the uh, fixed end, uh, 21 point, that means for everywhere in the world, the standard is any company that is above 15% and it's a good one. But for fixing 21, we're very sure all eyes on fixing in the industry as a leader who can support in price and earnings. They are leading in every aspect. For me, it's a good one. But if you look at that of uh, me and Baker 17, it's also a very good one. Look at the price is selling around the no, 450 kubo, 445 kubo. It's a good one, depending on your investment objective. If you're looking at one that has the highest uh, upside potential, the two have it because it will end that will impact on your price. If any become better at the end of the you know, whole year, which by this uh, first quarter, we expect to see these numbers to redefine where these stocks are going in terms of performance. Investors should look at this stock they're looking good, but there's also potential for GSK. The way it's going, I saw and I see that GSK will also do well going to because this sector need attention and because they are very, very important to you know, healthcare. I know that anywhere in the world, healthcare sector should give proper attention. Even the government and private sector, I know that there's still more opportunity for this sector to do well. That means if you are thinking long, what can stop you looking the way of the healthcare? All right, I was going to ask you, but you, I guess you already took that out. You answered <laughs> it already. All right, uh, thank you for joining us, Mr. Kofi. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Charles. Thank, thank you for so having me. Okay, I, I should have taken that one after the other. Okay, thank you for joining us, Mr. Kofi. <laughs> thank you for having me. All right, thanks for joining us, Mr. Charles. Thank you for having me. All right, and thank you so much, Amber Samodian, for joining us uh, yes, for being a part you. of this. Thank you. Good one. I hope you enjoy your weekend. Yeah, there. Yeah, you too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, many thanks for joining us today. My name is Perpetua Fasami Peter. Do enjoy the rest of the day and have a restful weekend. Bye for now.